Welcome to the You Don't Know What You Don't Know podcast by Innovative Business Advisors. Successful business owners who have started, grown, and led businesses share their journey and direction for the benefit of those traveling the same path. So today we're talking with Greg Atchison, and Greg is the principal chair for C12 of Greater St. Louis. And C12 is an executive roundtable forum exclusively for Christian business owners and their leadership teams. He provides area business leaders with the resources, tools, business guidance, peer accountability, and accessibility for St. Louis area companies building greater businesses for a greater purpose. Greg came to C12 with a breadth of experience that includes co-leading a $50 million P&L, leading an R&D team charged with developing next-generation training technologies, and overseeing more than 350 technicians supporting a wide variety of military aircraft. His most recent efforts have been in the area of leadership development and executive coaching, where he was involved with the development of Boeing's emerging leaders, senior managers, and executives from around the world. Greg has a Ph.D. in organization and management with a specialization in leadership and served as an adjunct professor with Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University. He holds a professional certified coach credential from the International Coaching Federation as well. Greg, after a very distinguished career with a famous Fortune 60 company, what led you to jump into business ownership and start a C12 chapter? Mm. Yeah, Steve. Thank, first off, thanks for the introduction. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I was with Boeing, as, you, as you've already said, uh, yeah. working, doing leadership development. An opportunity came up to, uh, to even consider retirement. And retirement from Boeing, at least. I have not retired yet from, from work. The opportunity came up. My wife and I prayed about it, and uh, we decided it was time just to take a chance and go out and do something else. I mean, I spent lots of time with Boeing's business leaders and talking about really what it means to to run a great business. Um, I was a little bit familiar with C12 already from a sense of, at one point, um, I was asked to consider or to to do some research around um, mentoring programs for our our business leaders within Boeing. Hmm. And that gave me this, just gave me some visibility into the idea of executive roundtables and what the heck our executive roundtable was. So as I began to think about that and began to do some research around it, it opened up several doors and just, you know, what what did that look like? And it inter- introduced me to several different executive roundtable organizations. I got familiar with them. And then when it came time for me to actually decide um, what I wanted to do with my, given my um, facilitation experience with, with Boeing's leaders, um, teaching for the military, teaching at the college level, um, my executive coaching experience, I just decided, and I wanted to do it for the kingdom. So being a Christian, somebody of faith, I wanted to do something for the kingdom at this point. So there are a number of opportunities, and C12 just had the best business model. And uh, it was about a six-month vetting process for the organization to make sure I was going to be a good fit and for, for my wife and I just to make sure that the company, C12, the headquarters, was a good fit for us. Um, and again, that vetting process was pretty darn extensive. And, and once we kind of worked through that, um, in December of 2016, um, we stepped into it and have not looked back since. And C12 isn't that old of an organization either. How at, at, at what point, I mean, it seems like it was much smaller in 2016 than it is today. Yeah. So actually, we're, we are coming up on our 31st anniversary. We're going to oh, celebrate wow. our 30th anniversary hmm. here um, and later this month, matter of fact. Um, okay. We'll get together, the chairs will get together in, the, in Dallas and, and do that celebration with Buck. But um, so C12 proper, if you will, is mm-hmm. the corporation is a 30-year-old company. And you're right. In 2016, it was much smaller. So um, probably when I started in 2016, there were 65 chairs around the country. So again, the C12 is a franchise business uh, started in Tampa. Um, 30 years ago with just uh, Buck Jacobs, a former business owner, starting his first couple of roundtables. And one of his one of his members, his C12 members, another business owner, said, hey, I want to do what you're doing, Buck. And that kind of launched into the franchise model where um, he launched out on his own and started another operation for C12. And since then, there are now about 160 of us around the country. Wow. A hundred in the last six plus years. Yeah, 
So it's it's grown incredibly. Um, and now we're in three different countries to include Brazil, Malaysia, and Singapore, I believe. And we're, we're vetting other countries as we speak. You know, there are a lot of CEO peer organizations out there. Now, I was familiar with um, at least three others, uh, Tech, Vistage, and Tab. Mm-hmm. And I know I've, I've heard of many others out there as well. Did you find that C12 was the only one with the Christian focus at that point, or was it just distinguished above others that, that had that focus? So we're all in the business of, of helping business owners climb that ladder of success, I would say. You've named three of those. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, YPO, yep. WPO EO. for women, EO. Yeah. All of, you know, we're all there to help business owners climb that ladder of success. I just want to make sure that ladder's propped up against the right wall, you know. Um, yeah. It is not worth a business owner um, putting everything he has to grow that business. And we talk a lot about 10xing a business, just, you know, multiples of 10 kind of thing. It's just not worth sacrificing a family for or your health, for example. Um, So when I say I want to make sure that that ladder's propped up against the right wall, it's really around, you know, what's most important. Well, you came from a strong military background and then into the corporate world where, you know, you you really had quite a distinguished career and leading the Boeing Leadership Center was an unbelievable accomplishment, right? It had to be something special to step out on your own because was this this your first kind of business entrepreneurial opportunity or? Yeah. Um, I don't want to qualify to say I wasn't the leader of the Leadership Center, but one of the one of the facilitators and one of the key leaders. Yeah. um, Yeah. Um, And that was a blessing. And you're right. It was a stretch to step out. I had a very nice, comfortable salary. My wife and I, when we were planning our retirement, were thinking five years later. Mm-hmm. And yet, um, we felt like we were called to do something and just to rely on faith, you know, just to, to trust God, if you will. He's promised to provide for all of our needs, and we just took him up on that promise kind of thing. So we were comfortable where we were, but God doesn't necessarily call us to be comfortable. He wants to stretch us. And I know from a leadership perspective that we develop best when we're pressed, you know, when we're stretched. Walking through the fire, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. Um, even retiring from the military, when we spent 22 years in the Air Force, paychecks twice a month, very comfortable, um, and then to step into Boeing. When I stepped into Boeing, I was um, joining their very first joint venture okay. in Seattle. And there was um, some angst. You know, There were some unionizations going on within the employee workforce. So there was even question, you know, on my on my behalf, you know, what happens if there's a strike within this company? You know, mm-hmm. do I collect a paycheck and things like that? But once again, we stepped out and, and trusted that things would be okay and it proved right, mm-hmm. you know? So one of the things I, I say about a blessing of the Boeing Leadership Center, and, and you've been there, but the facility is just a gorgeous facility. And, mm-hmm. and part of that building is built on a curve. You know, it's a third of a mile long. If you were mm-hmm. to walk from one end to the other, it's a third of a mile long. And it's built with an arch in it, in it, if you will. So the hallways are curved. And mm-hmm. part of the emphasis there is the fact that we never know what's around the corner. Mm-hmm. You know, we can do all of the planning we want. Um, and yet we don't know what's around the corner. And it's just a good, you know, if nothing else, it just it helps us to make it a little more, a little more comfortable, you know, knowing that we don't have to have all the answers. Yeah. We, uh, as as you know, we work with business owners all the time, and I think about, you know, franchises. When you talk about a franchise business model, there are some that are really good, and I suspect C12 is probably in that in that mix, uh, with good support and good guidance and so forth, and and kind of that you know never flying alone kind of a mentality, right? Always have somebody to to work with you, and there are others where basically you just get the name and it's 100% up to you to go do it. That's right. And I saw the same thing in the peer groups, mm-hmm. you know, some of those it depended upon the strength of the leader, but uh, but C12 has got this backbone of curriculum, I think, which is is really interesting. How is that do you feel that's made it easier for you or has it made it more challenging? Is that, or is that just something you've, you've learned to become accustomed to uh, through your stewardship? With yeah. You? Uh, I will say that the curriculum is a differentiator for the company. Mm-hmm. You know, there are, again, there are other peer groups 
peer roundtables or executive roundtables out there, a lot of different ones, and they just all have different models where there are, it's a, part of it is a speaker's bureau, you know, and they bring in outside speakers um, to come in, and it's typically somebody who's recently authored a book, and they're kind of pitching their book and their model, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be around productivity or what have you. So just um, perhaps a little inconsistencies. Our model is built on a year-long curriculum, so we're planning a year in advance. In fact, I'm on the curriculum team. We got together a month ago and planned for 2023, so we're keeping our ear to the ground to say what are the economists predicting for next year? What are they, what are they saying that we're going to face? We're also asking our, our C12 members, our business owners, what are the things that are keeping them awake right now? And you know, for right now, it's mostly around talent, it's around supply chain, and it's around the potential for a recession. So how to deal with those three things. So we are very intentional about the curriculum, and we plan for a flow um, throughout the year where we're early, the first trimester, if you will. We're focused on people and the culture kind of things, and then we begin to talk about business disciplines, and then we begin to move into the planning phase for the fall, planning for the next year, if you will. So very intentional about the flow of the curriculum. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Pretty pretty big honor to be part of that planning because that's an awesome responsibility too. It is, and the curriculum you, you're having to look around that corner a little bit, aren't that's, you? That's right. Yeah. And the curriculum is first rate. I mean, we oh, we're using question. we're using um, noted thought leaders. We're pulling from the best, you know, from Harvard Business Review and the people who are writing for them or speaking for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not uncommon to to be referencing sources out of the education, the academic field, things like that. So as you went into this journey, right, I, I, I got it. You want to, I, I love the analogy, right? I want to put my ladder against a pretty, pretty strong wall. Mm-hmm. And um, being kingdom focused, it doesn't get any stronger than that. What, what was the thing that you didn't know that you had to learn once you got in? Were there any surprises once you, once you became a business owner and started down this path? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure any any business owner faced the same thing, and that's probably to start with just the no's, you know. Mm-hmm. So in, in our business model, you know, it's about talking to people, mm-hmm. right? I mean, sales, it's not a, you know, I don't have a storefront where people are going to come visit me, but it's about, you know, sitting down and meeting with people like you and, and getting to know them and asking the questions about, you know, what are they struggling with, and then just introducing them to C12. And for a lot of those folks... Um, it might be this is not the right time or I'm already involved with a peer group from another organization. Uh, and for some, it's I just don't have the time. I don't see how I can have the time. That was my biggest uh, hurdle to cross was how in the world do you devote one day a month? That's right. You know, and it seems like uh, uh, us as business owners, we uh, w- I, and I use that that term loosely because you and I believe a little differently. Mm-hmm. We're really stewards, not mm-hmm. really owners. Yeah. Uh, but how do you devote? you know, one day a month to Mm -hmm. being completely away when, um, you know, time is the most precious resource. That's right. Yeah. And that's, that's typically the pushback that we get. And yet, you know, I can talk to folks like you over time who will say, I, you know, for me that day, being very intentional about working on my business might be the only time that I have that month to actually get away and to work on my business, to focus on the business focus on my personal life. Yeah, and I'll give you an additional testimony. For me, it really helped me to have a closer relationship with God as as not only did I have to prepare to spend that time together with peers and, and deal with material that is very timely and very pertinent to what we do all day, but, you know, it it enabled me to keep that communication channel with God open throughout the month, right? And yeah, right. and take the learnings from the sessions or, you know, concerns going in and mm-hmm. and learnings coming out and continue to work on that. So that's, it's been quite a blessing. That's right. Yeah. It really is a time that most business owners don't allocate, but it's the time they're they're really working on themselves the most. That's become right. Become better students. That's right. And if you're just to add all the numbers up, I mean to spend seven hours um, together one day each month. I mean, it's, you know, it's less than 100 hours. And so it's just a small percentage of your total work life, you know, when you figure out at least 2,000 hours on average for a business owner spending time working in their business. 
Yeah, it's. So, I, I agree. It's really it's, small. It is. It is really small. But you do end up with this binder on your shelf that That's is right. that becomes like the encyclopedia. You know, right. you've got all this this really impactful information at your fingertips. So. That's really good. I'm I'm curious. You've been in the business now six years. What are you most proud of in that period of time so far? Yeah, that's that's a fairly easy answer to say. And and that I'm most proud of our members. Many of those members, I think, more than half of the members have been there for the last five or six years, mm -hmm. and to see their businesses grow um, has been phenomenal. More than that, um, it's a, to see them grow in their leadership. And then also to see them grow and just their comfort with their faith in the workplace. The vast majority of business owners, if they're people of faith, they're afraid to mention God or they're afraid to pray, you know, with their members or afraid to even bring up the subject of church or what have you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and what we, what I help people understand is that they are called to be people of faith 24-7. As a person of faith, as a Christian, I'm called to worship him, you know all day, every day. And yet on top of that, I'm also a business owner. So I'm first a Christian and then a business owner, if you will. And to see that begin mm -hmm. to shine in, in the people is just pretty phenomenal. I'm also proud to see that them begin to take bigger roles in their community. So as you know, we have business owners who are stepping into state politics, for example, mm -hmm. perhaps school boards, mm -hmm. city councils, Right, where they begin to take those leadership positions and begin to influence um, their communities, I think, is for me, that's what it's really all about. Yeah, it's kind of fascinating, too. And to influence their community, I've seen that mm -hmm. uh, conclusively. I've, I've clearly seen a lot of the business owners growing their business, mm -hmm. too. But uh, the more impactful thing is growing their involvement with the people that they work right. with every day and the influence right. and impact. That's right. Positively that they have on people's lives is just uh, just amazing. Yeah. You know, you and I have experienced that. And for us, we talk about business as a ministry or we'll, we term it BAM. Yes. And to see the cultural changes in the businesses where they begin just to care for their employees and their employees' family and they begin to think about them differently. Um, you know, as we routinely go into a business and, and interview their employees, it's not uncommon to say, this is my family. You know, it might be my work family, but it feels like family. And to talk to employees who will say, I'll never work anyplace else. I could be offered more money in a different place, but um, this is the place for me because they take good care of us. It is amazing how sticky uh, that, that right. makes things together right. between between folks. Yeah. That's right. Could be a real secret competitive advantage we may have just touched on there That's that right. we didn't know about. Yeah. It it always fascinated the the first things that fascinated me on some of those earlier ones was the companies that we would go into the first or second time mm -hmm. they didn't fully trust us, right? They were still guarded in their responses to the questions. But I, I particularly remember the last one that I was on where we went in and interviewed the employees of the company. They'd been through it enough that they really not only trusted us, they kind of empowered us to make sure we brought That's a couple right. of key messages yeah. back to the owner. That's right. You know, over time, some of those members have done this five times now. Yeah. And for them to take this seriously, to understand that the members who are coming out to interview, that they're investing their time, that they want the best for that business and they want the best for their employees. So um, the employees begin to get a sense that my owners are our owners are taking this business seriously and they're making cultural changes over time, you know, whether that be uh, enhancing the benefits or just the way that they treat their employees, just the way that they lead their employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, the begin impact. to talk about trust. Um, begins to turn the tide, if you will. Authentic trust discussion. Exactly. Yeah. Not just because somebody sent you a manual from corporate that said you got to go through this lesson. That's right. Yeah. Fascinating. I know there's been some frustrations as well in your business ownership, as there always are. Any that you care to share or talk about? I think um, 
you know, again, initially early on, it was just getting used to the nose. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know from my training as a C12 chair that I typically have to talk to 18 people to actually jo get a new member to join, so kind of thing. So I began to look forward to those, you know, I only need 16 more no's and then I'll get a, get a yes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it became part of a game early on. Mm -hmm. um, in the middle of this journey over the last, say, like, three years or so, it was mm -hmm. getting to the place where we were ready to launch a second group, if you will. And even over the last year, I, you know, uh, a year ago, as we were kind of thinking about moving into 2022, um, we had about a group and a half, you know, our, our groups are typically 12 people or so, and we mm -hmm. had a shortfall there and to come into the year and then to fill that second group very very quickly. And it was really around referrals from our members, challenging our members to invite other members, to ask that question, who do you know who needs to know about C12? And that's been a blessing since then, you know, the people who've come to C12 just in the last year are, are all referrals, mm -hmm. which speaks very highly, yeah. you know, that yeah. they see the value in the business. Yeah, fascinating. What what challenges you as you think about the business every day? Are there, you know, learning? I love the way you said, I kind of gamified the nose, mm. right? Yeah. Figuring out what my numbers were and figuring out once I got over that or I was, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of nose closer to getting mm -hmm. to the yes, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. If I were to think about challenges, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably um, just how best to use my time. You know, I'm here to serve my members. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what I'm called to do. And sometimes that means prioritizing just, I, well, I love to be involved and I love to, to help members. Sometimes that's might be saying no, saying no to good things, to say yes to the great things, mm -hmm. you know. Boy, is that a challenge, right? Learning to say no to the good things so you can say yes to the great things. If, if you're a person like me who likes to please everybody, you know, <laughs> means, which means answering, saying yes to every request. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I always found it to be easier to say yes. Maybe it's because we encounter so many no's in our world. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. As you begin to think about the franchise model, mm -hmm. so you, I would assume you've got is it a geographic territory? Is that the way the, the franchise is built out? Do you have geographic areas? It is, I mean, C12, the franchise model is based on a geographic area. Okay. And that, that area is based on um, the number of business owners in mm. the region, okay. the size of the businesses, and the demographics that are produced by Barna. So Barna Research Organization mm -hmm. would, does a survey every year, and they can pretty much detail... Um, the population in regards to faith. So all of that goes into play to determine an area, a mm -hmm. geographic area. So for me, for C12 of Greater St. Louis, for example, we are, my, my uh, franchise agreement would say that I can hold meetings or we can hold meetings within St. Charles County, St. Louis County, and then just into the other side of the river mm. into Illinois. So you think about Edwardsville, O'Fallon, Belleville areas. Mm -hmm. We can hold meetings in any of those areas. That's not to say our members are exclusively from there. So we have members in the Rolla area mm -hmm. in south of Mount Vernon, Illinois. So people could, could drive some distance, even fly to some of their meetings, for example, if that's what they're willing to do. So you've got a couple of groups now mm -hmm. and, uh, and a key advisor group, which is basically the the non-owner leaders of the businesses, that's right. right? That's right. W w have you measured what do you think the total potential would be? How many potential groups does does your market area encompass? Yeah. If we were just to look at the demographics and the, the number of businesses in yeah. this area, uh, we would be talking about, um, so just from a pure capacity perspective, a chair like me, a um, person like me can handle about 36 business owners. That's three groups of business owners. Wow. And that's based on the amount of coaching that goes with, you know, our business owners not only get the the board meeting experience, that forum, but also the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. So I could add another group, um, have the capacity to do that. But with all the demographics, there could be a hundred, just about 200 business owners here, which would, which would tell you that we could have a total of five or six chairs here mm -hmm. within our region. Amazing. That there's enough opportunity here to support another four chairs at least to come in and, and work with me to, to grow this opportunity. 
But unlike Chick-fil-A, for example, you can you can have as many locations really as you want in that regard. Then, That's as right. As long as you have enough chairs to do the job. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we could populate um, meetings in multiple locations on multiple days during the week and throughout the month. Exactly. Excellent. So as you look around the corner into the future, what do you think about? Do you think about planning uh, the future of your um, groups as well and and where all that's going? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actively praying for and, and seeking another chair to come alongside me right now. So we yeah. would call those associate chairs right. um, to come alongside me. And, you know, what we see traditionally within the... The C-12 model is once one associate chair comes on, probably within another year, we begin to add another one and then another one. So kind of from a future planning, it's very much like a like a medical or professional practice in that regard then, right? That is. Adding another doctor, for example, yeah, yeah. would be exactly it. Interesting. Yeah. And then ultimately, long term, you know, my goal is to be thinking about those chairs, bringing on chairs that have some runway, you know, that might be younger and looking to take over the franchise, if you will, mm-hmm. to ultimately give an equity share into that franchise with the thought of at some point, it'll be time to begin to think about downsizing my practice, mm-hmm. you know, reduce the number of, of groups that I work with and then uh, turning it over ultimately to somebody else or multiple people. Some of our models have two and three chairs who are the owners of those franchises. You said the vetting process was pretty extensive for you and Nancy when you came in, right? That's right. Six, six plus months. Is that is that similar? If, if you bring in an associate chair, do they have to go through a similar process? It is not as extensive for okay. an associate chair, and yet there's still a process. That there's going to be background checks done because the, yeah. you know, we don't want to do anything that's going to put C12 in a bad light. You know, so there will still be background checks. There will still be a vetting process around different assessments, you know, personality assessments, as well as can they work with me? You know, are we going to be a good fit personally kind of thing? Right. A lot of it is around calling. You know, this is something that unlike anything else that they would have ever done. It is. It really is service, being of service to others, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. Well, interesting. Uh, We're honored that you took the time to come talk to us about this today. It's amazing. Um, the the business that you're in and the outcomes that you deliver. If people want to learn more about this, Greg, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. So the best way is to go to the C12 website, which is c12forums.com. Mm-hmm. That'll take you to the headquarters website and then just to search on Greater St. Louis. Or they can reach me at, at greg.atchison, so G-R-E-G dot Atchison, A-T-C-H-I-S-O-N, at c12forums.com. Or if they wanted to call me, they could do that at 636-866-8044. Outstanding. Well, I can assure you that if they do, they will be blessed beyond measure, oh, as, as, thank you. as Tom Hill used to say, and I, uh, and I fully endorse. Thank you so much, my friend. It's my been pleasure. a delight to have you today, and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the You Don't Know What You Don't Know podcast. We invite you to visit www.youdon'tknowwhatyoudon'tknow.com and sign up to receive updates on upcoming episodes. You can also let us know if you'd like to be a guest or recommend a business owner to be interviewed. Find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, where you can like, follow, share, and join our efforts. Thanks for listening. We hope you join us again.